Hi, this is Shoshana from BeAHappyMom.com and also from CreationsFromJerusalem.com In today's video, I'd like to answer a question that was sent in to me as to what is the connection between art and occupational therapy. So let's take a little bit of a look. Some of these items we're going to be looking at on my own art. Some of them have been done either by clients or together with clients. Let's take a little bit of a look. First item we look at here is a flower pot. I was going to turn the screen, but I think that'll be a little bit confusing for the video. This has been done as a coil pot in ceramics. Um, it's one of the pieces that I did. And I've used pottery and ceramics many times with clients. We'll get to that in a little bit. Behind us over here is a wall hanging that I did many years ago while still at high school actually. That's an applique. It's a combination of um, use of felt on another fabric background with embroidery. Here we have a scarf with an, um, one of a number of techniques that I learned as to how to do painting on silk and on fabric. A little bit more of my work on fabric. Here's a t-shirt for a child which has an image of dolphins playing in the in the water, splashing in the waves. Um, an adult's t-shirt with butterflies on. These are examples again some of my own art and some that I've done with clients. Here's some more fabric paint. paint. A little bit more creative, an abstract theme for an underwater image. Here's something a little bit more realistic with flowers. Here we have um, a little doll that was hand knitted by a client of mine while she was recovering from surgery. In front of us is a waste paper basket and this has been made with matchsticks um, there are a number of different designs that we used to make in one of the hospitals that I worked in with matchsticks assembled onto wood and laced together down the side and then the whole um, waste paper basket would be assembled correctly, some of it with assistance from our woodwork technician. I have over here also the start of some beaded jewellery taking place in preparation for sale. So what is it that we do with all of these crafts? Some people say to me, you can't be a jack of all trades. Um, actually, occupational therapists are masters of activities and occupations and masters of activity analysis and identifying after evaluating our, our patients or our clients, what activity or occupation might be most important to them. There's another example as to how I've used my art in preparing worksheets for children to improve fine motor skills, graphomotor skills, number of different drawings. Obviously, we explain to them what to what's needed to be done, whether they'd be drawing on the art on the dotted line as a solid line, learning to color in filling it with plasticine, using stickers. There are obviously a number of ways that one can use these worksheets. So what is the connection between all these different creative uh, tasks or activities and occupational therapy? Well, this waste paper basket, I forget actually which client it was that made it, but um, in the woodwork room where we used to we used to place our clients, um, the clients would be improving standing tolerance, fine motor coordination, some of the patients were even blind who were learning how to use tasks and how to be able to regain skills and function. Sewing skills are used in all sorts of different forms for relaxation, um, for learning a craft that could be turned into a home industry. In, in the old days, 20 years ago, we called it home industries. Nowadays, we call it small businesses. The um, tasks that we did or the items that we make with the different forms of fabric, fabric painting, 
printing on fabric and so on. Again, um, quite often for hand function uh, use. We'd use our tasks and activities with a range of different a of ages. It could be with a child, it could be with an adult, it could be with somebody who's retired. There are very many different reasons as to why we would engage a, a client in a meaningful occupation. It's always according to the needs and the interests of the person. We do not impose any um, activity on a person if it's something they don't enjoy or it's something they'd be incapable of doing. And we have to learn how to adapt the activity, the environment, the task, how to build up handles. This item over here, this was a lot of fun in one of the hospitals I worked in. We each had, each of us occupational therapists had uh, a square that we did our candle wicking on. And uh, the finished product was turned into a large quilted duvet cover which was then raffled to raise money for the for the hospital and uh, the therapist's names were all put into a hat and this is an item that I won I was lucky enough to won to win a competition so it also could be a little bit of team building as you can see there are a number of different benefits a number of different uses for occupations and to answer the question again how can you be using so different, so many different types of crafts and activities? Well, art is not the only type of occupation we use. We also use sports, we use music, we use many other types of occupation, as you'll see in further videos. If you have any other questions about occupational therapy, about how it applies to the role of wife and mother, or any other questions, whether you're an OT student, whether you're a newly qualified occupational therapist, um, or if you're in need of occupational therapy yourself, do be in touch with me via my website. I'll be putting a couple of links down below in the notes in the bottom of this video. And uh, I love to have interaction. If you have any questions, you're welcome to put a comment in the below. Please like this video, subscribe to the channel. I hope to be putting out many more videos. And uh, please be in touch once again www.beahappymom.com or www.creationsfromjerusalem.com